you have to deal with all the time here. <laughs> this, this is very annoying. I'm here in our game room. It is a garage that me and Kelly closed in and made a game room many, many years ago, probably 15 years ago. Had a pool table, ping pong table, which ping pong table was set on top of the pool table. A little sitting area and all that. But I'm gonna change it out. We sold the pool table, ping pong table. I'm gonna build me a golf simulator for this room. Have no clue what I'm doing. I'm gonna figure it out as I go, bring you along with me. Maybe give you a little advice from what I've learned, but more than likely probably looking at the comments on why didn't you do this, why didn't you do that? I have decided I'm going to do a raised platform in here. I have the ceiling height for it. That shouldn't be an issue. It's an old garage, like I said, we closed the end and everything slopes to this far corner in front of me. And that's where I'm gonna end up putting the simulator in that area. I also wanna be able to putt, so I don't wanna hit the putt and everything just break left and hard left into that corner. I'm gonna build a platform, try to get it level. I'm gonna recess some cups in it, I think, for putting. A lot I hadn't figured out what I'm gonna do yet. I hadn't figured out how I'm gonna build everything. It's gonna be a learning process and hopefully from my mistakes, y'all will learn. I'll give you updates and show you what I'm doing. We'll go from there. Kelly told me I needed some B-rolling, whatever the hell that is. She said something, something. So she came over here and filmed me cut and maybe she can explain to you what the heck B-rolling or B-roll or... B-roll. B-roll is what helps the story move along. It's in between the actual clips of us talking and stuff, B-roll is the filler, the part that lets you know what you're doing. That's my description of it. I asked him if he was filming B-roll. <laughs> he just like looked at me. It'll take a while, cause I ain't no telling what I'm gonna screw up or mess up or figure <laughs> I've done wrong and redo or whatever. If anything, we'll have a hell of a deck in our garage. <laughs> We're gonna have a heck of a deck. <laughs> All right, I got the flooring down last night, or not the whole entire flooring, but I got the platform framed out and put together. This platform here, a year ago, would probably cost you about $200, $210 at the most, maybe. Now it's about 500. It's crazy, it is outrageous. You know, there's a lot of cheaper ways you could have went about building this platform, but I wanted it level, I wanted it secured. It's gonna be here hopefully for a long time. And I've got to add an extension on for the hitting area out here. I haven't decided whether I'm just gonna make it permanent or detach it, full walkway here to get stuff in and out. Next thing's laying the plywood and um, we'll put it down. And give some advice, I'd highly recommend using some construction adhesive when you're laying your plywood down to help, help it bond real better, keep squeaks, keep it from moving just a little bit. And, Keep the squeaks down on it. That'll be the next part. Let's get started. back on the golf simulator project that I'm doing in our garage that we enclosed. We removed the pool table and ping pong table. Went on vacation out in Colorado skiing, had a blast. So now gotta get back started on this. Got all the decking down, got it leveled. Recessed me an area for my hitting mat. I went with the Real Field Country Club Elite hitting mat. I think that's the 20 by 36, I believe. I went down an inch and a quarter. Hopefully that's what it's supposed to be. That's what it looks like. About to start on cutting the holes for the two putting cups I'm gonna put in. I guess I should measure it, but I believe it's four and a eighth or four and a quarter 
inch. If it's four and eight, that whole saw is a lot cheaper than four and a quarter. I'll start on that end. That way, the end that everybody's gonna see mostly won't get, won't get too bad. We'll cut them holes, set the cups in, and see how we're gonna mount them, keep them from moving up and down. Don't know if I'm gonna glue them, have to drill them. We'll figure it out though. Like I said, I'm not an expert on this, just trying to figure it out as I go. Taking you along with me. Let's get started. We'll be laying our putting green turf. All right, come on. I got the first hole drilled for the cup. It's a little loose, you'll see. To secure it, I'm gonna drill four holes and put four screws in there. That way I can take it out later on if I need to be. Thought about gluing it in, but then if I ever wanted to take it out or needed to take it out for a reason, can't think of a reason I would, but be, be tough to. So I'm gonna put four screws in it side. I'm debating on it. One of my concerns is, is when you reach in the cup, will the screw scratch your hand or anything like that, but we'll see. We'll see how it works out. If not, I'll just order another cup and we'll do figure out something different. All right, the battery died. I wasn't paying attention. Didn't notice it. Anyway, I've got four screws in here. As you can see right here. This whole saw is maybe a hair too big, but I didn't want to spend $38 on one that for the exact size or just a little smaller where I didn't have to, didn't have to, um, <laughs> this is what you have to deal with all the time here. But anyway, seems like it's gonna work pretty good. Uh, reaching in here, does it scratch your hand at all or anything, so good to go. Got one more to do. She wants me to get the ball out of her, out of there. So she's like, watch, watch, I'll go, watch. And then she'll, oh, what is she gonna try to get? She's doing that, that Paul thing. I'm just measuring down about a half an inch from the top. And that's where I'm putting my holes in the cup at. Don't have to be perfect. No. Give me the ball. Oh, I'm not going to fight you for it. Oh, ball. I got the ball. See what I mean? If I go out in the yard and hit, she'll chase golf balls all day long. All day long. A little ratchet to get in here. I just got some shims up under here to get it up, get it started about the height I want it. I looked everywhere to find some cups at a local store. Couldn't find any, so I ended up having to order them off of Amazon, which is not my favorite thing to do. I'd much rather try to find everything locally and purchase it, but unfortunately for this golf simulator build, I have figured out, there you just about gotta order everything. So, these cups here came from Amazon. It was a two pack, and they weren't $8, I think, something like that. That wasn't much. Putting cups are in. One less thing down, or one more thing down, one less thing I gotta do. Fixing to start on finish cutting and putting down the turf. I'm gonna use staples on the edges, stretch it. Hopefully, hopefully won't have any little bubbles or anything or any little wrinkles in the middle. Um, I gotta make a seam right here. Got my hole cut out for my hitting mat. I'm gonna use a little bit of adhesive near the cups, the putty cups. Keep it down, I really don't wanna staple it there if I don't have to. Keep a track on it, see how it goes. Trial and error.
one of the bad things about doing the YouTube and talking, just gotta cut my music off every day on time. Because if we don't, get flagged by YouTube. Every time I talk, I have to cut my music off. So I'm about to film now. No talking, that way I can listen to my music. All right, it's been a little bit since worked on the simulator room. We went on vacation for a little over a week or so and I had to take the air conditioner unit out, as you can see there. I put a new Mr. Cool Split DI DIY unit in. Very easy to do, so if you're ever gonna do one, I give Mr. Cool props on that. It's pretty easy, pretty, works really good, it's very quiet. Got my sheetrock finished, painted that wall black, got my framing up for the um, net. Um, what I did was three quarter galvanized pipe from Lowe's. Comes in some 12 foot pieces. My ceiling's 10 foot, so I got some tees. I just slid on there, I cut it the right height, put the feet on both ends, put some bracing up in the ceiling, anchored it on both ends, ran a brace bar across with a tee up to help brace it in the middle. Other than that, I got my railing in me and the wife put in the railing for the curtains that's going to go around it amazon like i said we'll we'll link most of the stuff we bought on here ain't got a whole lot left still ain't got the infill for my turf cause the shipping's twice as much as a daggum infill but i hadn't figured that out yet so i'm gonna get that got the projector in the unicore qeds on the way i hadn't decided on a software whether e6 or tgc 2019 i'm still debating on that but i think i'm going to do the E6 has a free demo, only one course, but I think I'm gonna do that for a couple of weeks to see how I like it, and then um, I'll make my decision from there. The Unicore QED is facing towards the screen. Since you hadn't recorded anything in a while, like you just yeah. you just left well, them you hanging. When well, you get into it, okay. you don't think about the recording. Okay. 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 That's because they were watching. Why don't you tell them what you've done real quick? Okay. 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 Can't show these shots on it. <laughs> the editor uh, is in charge of what shots we show. Okay. 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 There you go. There's more tips there with uh, my iron, except for I went a little right and I never go a little right. But. Starting this project, we still get, uh, we're almost finished. We still got a little thing to do, a little few things to do. I gotta cover my wiring up there, then route another plug for the, the projector. That way it's on a different plug than the launch monitor. You gotta put some drapes down from the top so in case I hit a ceiling shot, don't go through my sheetrock. Go over a couple of things. I went with the Unicore QED. It's a great system and all that. If you watch videos on it, people say, oh, it's an easy installation. Well, if you're 50 years old and didn't grow up with computers, it may not be as easy as some people say. Reason being, Unicore sends zero information in the box. No instructions, no documentation, absolutely 
nothing. Unless you've done research to figure out where to find the information, you will not find it. But what I didn't know, because I screwed up a little bit on installing everything, what I didn't know is you can go to their website and under resources, all the manual. Problem with that, if you're trying to download software while looking at the manual online, they overlap and you can't do it on some of them. So you basically need two computers. Go to Unicor's website under resources. There is a list of the QED, the IXO, all the manuals for um, installation, calibration, and network settings. Network settings, very important. I watched a video online YouTube, golf, sim golf simulator videos. He was installing one, so I figured I'd just follow along with him. And he said he was gonna enter his IP address his IP address. So I'm thinking, okay, I gotta enter my IP address for my computer. Don't do that. There is a set IP address with the QED you'll enter. It's the same for everybody. It's not any particular person's laptop QED, which I mean IP address, which y'all probably already know this and think this guy's stupid. It is a set IP address. You just go online, go to their um, resources, find the manual that says network settings, and it'll tell you what IP address to put in there. Like I said, in the box, there is nothing. Not even a list of what's supposed to be in there. Not even a sheet of paper with Unicor's name on it. Nothing. So go online. If you can, print the manuals out. That way you can look at them while you're on your laptop. It'll save you a lot of headache and stress like I was getting last night. But anyway, it's up and going. I went with the basic software. Pretty much this is all I got. There is no driving range. There is no nothing else other than like a club fitting program. Gives you a lot of data though, so it's very useful and helpful. So if you're gonna go this route, you will need to get some third-party software like the Golf Club 2019 or E6 Connect. I haven't decided which way I'm gonna go. I'm gonna download E6 Connect's demo package here in a little bit. And I think you get it for 30 days to demo. I'm gonna try it, have a couple of people over, see how it works, and, and then I'll decide whether or not to go with TGC 2019 or yet. Other than that, coming along, just about got it. Once once we're completely finished and have people over, we'll do a little video and then do a summary of everything and an uh, estimated cost on this. So. Yeah. Estimated cost. Yeah, I ain't gonna tell you exactly how much. <laughs> One thing I've got to figure out, which I, I think I can just go to volume and cut it down, is this is very annoying. Okay. 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 I think there's an update okay. on the software that fixes this. So, I hadn't done the update. Okay. God almighty. Hitting here, sitting here hitting some balls in the simulator. About 85 to 90% done. But once you get that close and you can start hitting, why finish? Just start hitting, you can finish later. Really enjoying it so far. Got my platform, got a couple cups in there for putting. Unicore QED, high impact screen, some curtains around it. Had to buy a new computer because mine was about 15 years old and wouldn't handle it, so. There's a couple different balls out there. If you get the ones that come with Unicor, those balls fly a lot higher. So if you hit your wedges, you will put a hole in your ceiling unless you put some type of matting or draping above your ceiling. I put laid some down below the net to keep it from going through there and hitting the wall on the backside, but it's still hitting the very top, which I'll address that a little later. There's a couple other b balls made by Unicorn. I think it's Unicorn. It's Unicorn. It's got a Unicorn on the box anyway. Those balls will spin higher but launch lower will allow you to hit even, I'd say my 58 degree wedge, I hit right at the top of the screen without hitting the ceiling where the balls that come with Unicor, if I hit a 
50 degree, I'm hitting the ceiling. Just a little info for you. Excuse the mess, it's nasty as crap in here right now. We Christmas. got a lot of stuff going on, so. But I'll hit a shot real quick for you if you wanna see what it looks like. If I don't hit a good one, I'll just keep hitting and we'll edit all those out and we'll get a good one. This is just a easy pitching wedge. Pushed it a little bit, left the club face open, but you know, just an easy pitching wedge, 127 yards, carry. Pricing probably for everything with lumber. I built this big platform here to get everything level because this used to be a garage and everything sloped to one corner. Lumber was outrageous. This platform probably would have cost me about $200, $220 to build. It cost almost a thousand with the price of lumber right now. Uh, impact screen was about $800. Projector, another $800. The framing and curtains and all that, probably a couple hundred dollars, not too bad. The computer was almost $2,000 for the new laptop. The Unicore was $7,000. That's your biggest investment. It's gonna be your launch monitor. Oh. I went with Unicore uh, just cause I liked it mounted on the ceiling where it's not down on the floor behind you. I don't have the room to go. I don't have the room or money to go with Trackman way behind you or don't have, don't want to mess with uh, some of the others that sat on the ground, especially going left and right handed people. You know, this way you can mount it one time. I wish I'd have went with the, the next level up on the Unicore instead of the QED. I wish I'd have went with the IXO, but I didn't want to spend the extra $4,000. So, but I'm real happy with it so far. You got E6 Connect. Of course, this uh, course simulator software for your computer. I went with it. Not a whole lot of reasons why. Just just the one I chose to go with. And so far, I've been happy with it. But it's. I don't know if I'm gonna which way I'll go after this. Which software I'll run. But you got a couple of different options on your software. I went with the E6 Connect and been happy with it so far. But it is a little little more expensive. Hadn't had any issues with it. Uh, other when they update, but you know. Ain't too bad. If you have any any questions, anything I can still remember and help you with, ask in the comments. Kelly will tell me about them. I'll see if I can get the answers to them or if I remember the answers to them and um, get it back to you. Until next time, like and subscribe.